Hello. On today's quick video, I'm going to show you how I use Hummingbird Auto Chart Live. It's a fantastic feature built into most Hummingbird units, and I think it's something you should use quite a bit. Of course, there are various ways to use it, lots of different settings you can uh, tweak. But once again, today I'm going to show you what I do and why I enjoy Hummingbird Auto Chart Live so much. So let's get the boat launched, get set up, and see what we can do today. Okay, so before we go out there and start doing the mapping, let's show you some of the settings that I use on the Hummerbird. What I have here with me now is a Hummerbird Helix 10. It's an SI unit. Um, once again, Hummerbird Auto Chart is preloaded in most of the uh, Hummerbird units, especially in all the new units. It's, it's in every one of them, and it's a great feature. So let's start off here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to insert my Hummerbird Zero Lines mapping card. Now, what I like to do is I like to have my card unlocked and what I mean by that is I'll show you here you, this little indicator here on the side of the SD card here needs to be in this position which means it's unlocked so when you put it into the machine it will be the default recording position now you can record into the machine itself which will give you about eight hours of record time um, but with the uh, with the card itself you know, you'll never fill it in your lifetime. Uh, you can chart forever, seems like, and it's, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be, have, have lots of room anyway. Also, by using the zero lines card, it gives me a reference of the shoreline, so something I can follow in there as well um, from when I'm making my own chart. So what we're going to do first is, I got Auto Chart Live on now. I'll press Menu once to get into the quick menu here. I'll go down to Auto Chart. I'm going to right arrow. See, I got it off. My auto chart live here. I get transparency at zero. So if you have like another map, I don't have a map of this lake here, but if you have like an, a Navionics map or a Hummingbird map, um, Lake Master, whatever the case may be, you can turn the transparency up and it'll allow you to see through the map and see the, the auto chart live map you're making. So you can see the map below it, okay? Now we're going to go down to, uh, you can see here, I got my card inserted by the way. It says save location, ST card in slot number two. All right, now I'm going to go to Options, and we're going to go to Color Palette. I personally prefer Color Palette number 10. It gives me um, a few colors there, the blues, the, the different shades of blues, and the white. It's, a, it's what I prefer. There are different options, There's many different palettes you can choose from, whatever you like. Um, so I have depth colors turned on, highlight colors number one, shallow colors number one. Contour lines, of course, are turned on. I have my interval set at one foot, and the lines will be black so I can see it in all my colors, okay? And before we start, too, another thing you want to back out and just go to the chart menu and go up to water level offset. Okay, so some of you people have, of course, um, lakes or reservoirs that change depths all the time. I'm on a small natural lake today and the depth is very stable pretty well all year, just drops a little bit with the summertime. But we're here, here we are at the end of November. It's about three degrees Celsius, about 37 Fahrenheit. And uh, the water level is only up a few inches, believe it or not, from a normal pool, as you would call it. So I'm gonna leave mine, my setting here at zero. Now, if I was up, if the, if the, if the, the place was really, really high, flooded, I can raise that up, or if it's really low, I can raise it down so that my map data is accurate. So if I'm in a 10-foot hole and it's flooded two feet, I add two feet, it'll show 12 feet on the screen today. When I come back later on, this normal pole will be 10 feet, it'll be, it'll be 10 feet. Okay, then so once again, we'll back out. Menu, up to auto chart, right, record, on. Okay, so now as I move around the lake here shortly, it's going to start making the map as I go. As you can see, I've already been here once before early in the summer for a little fishing, and I got a little bit of charting done that day when it's just right idle around. Um, once again, personally, I will take the auto chart live and turn it on all the time, and I will literally uh, map as I fish, as I run around, as I idle around, whatever I'm doing. As long as the boat's on, electronics are running, I always have auto chart live running to make maps as I go. All right, let's get uh, set up here and do some mapping of the lake.
Now, personally, when I'm making maps, and I know my goal today is just to do some mapping, I idle around. Um, I want to get a really good quality image, and I want to get a good quality map, I should say. So I want that sonar to be reading nice and clean, clear readings. And as I idle around, it'll slowly fill in the data and create those maps. The Bay Run right now here is very shallow, as you can see. It's only four, five, six feet at average. Um, when you get up the little lake there, it'll open up a little more and be able to create some more data points, which will give you that map reference. So once again, um, another thing you want to consider when you're mapping is to make multiple passes. The more passes you make, the more accurate the data is going to become. So if you have a small bay that you want to know a lot about, you want to know all the, uh, the various features of that particular bay um, or cove or whatever the case may be, um, I recommend that you do a series of passes uh, up and down the, the, uh, the cove, okay? Um, maybe I do them about, uh, I guess I'd have to say, what, 50 feet apart or so um, as I'm going around. Now, when you get that done, it's nice to come back and do opposing passes. So you want to do another set of passes, basically 90 degree of where you were before. And that's going to give you lots of reference points uh, coming from both angles, and it's going to give you a really high quality map that's going to be very detailed that you can come back and look at later. Okay, something else I want to quickly show you here. Um, once again, I'm on a fairly shallow lake, fairly natural shallow lake here in Nova Scotia, Canada, and the depths are don't they don't vary too much. Um, the deepest spot in this lake might be 20 feet. It's a very small hole, as most of it, like say, is five, six feet in the smaller coves, up to 10, 15 or so, 17 feet over here in the middle of the lake. Um, what I can do to show you some on this pallet here, number pallet number 10, that I like it so much. I'm just going to press the menu once. Go to auto chart again, right arrow, and I'm going to go down to auto chart options again. And you see my max range right now is at 50 feet. So when I'm on some of the bigger lakes map, and I, I use 50 foot as my max range, but as I bring that down here, I'll bring, I'll bring it down to about like uh, 12. So what happens, you see the lines here will change. So white will be, I use white, the reason why I like that is I know that when I'm in white zone, I'm, I'm safe to run. All right, so right now we're at eight feet, here's nine, here's 10. And as I change the color, the max range, I say the, t the colors change, you'll see how I got my, my white, my lighter blue, and then my darker blue, which are the three main colors here, darker blue, medium blue, and white. So that's the max range, which you can set for. So once again, if you know you're safe in 10 feet of water, or you feel safe in eight feet of water, you can set that so that anything greater than, here. see here, we're, we're at 13 feet, here's 14 foot max range. So basically, anything is at 10 foot range is white for clear running. Anything between five and nine, nine and a half feet is, is gonna be the medium range. Anything shallower than four and a half feet or so is gonna be the, the darker color. One other thing too, on these maps, you can go to menu, menu, Once again, the, the, the Hummingbird chart menu. And you go up to here or down, it should have went down. Um, shallow water highlight, you can turn that on. And you can set it to, say, four feet or five feet. So, there we go, down. here's five feet. So now, anything shallower than five feet on my mat that I've made so far, is turned red, which is the color I like to see. And the reason why I do that is when I'm in, when I'm running lakes, I know some dangerous spots, and I've got it mapped already. I know to stay away from red. Do not run shallower than the red zone. So I got to set for five feet. I can make that say eight feet for running in a boat on a bigger lake. So that's something else that's very useful uh, on the mapping you create with the Hummingbird Auto Chart. Okay, one more quick thing to show you here. I just want to show you this. As long as you have sonar readings, 
you can create maps. You can create maps at high speed as well, or just a slow, uh, slow run. You can be going 20 miles an hour, you can be going 70 miles an hour. As long as you've got sonar readings to give depth, then the Auto Chart Live will create a map for you, which is a nice feature when you want to cover a lot of area, just get a quick, quick reference. Um, you can introduce some errors, which I can show you in another video um, about uh, about that. You know, get incorrect depth readings maybe when you're bouncing through a wave, or whatever. But I just want to show you here quickly. I'll get up a plane here very fast and just do a quick run across the lake, and you'll see how it makes a map as I go. One last thing before I wrap it up here today, that is the, as I mentioned earlier in my video, I like to have my card unlocked so that I'm always recording to it. So as you're driving around island, you'll see your screen very quickly blink and your map will just very quickly disappear and come back. And what's going on is it's saving the data to the card as you go. So it'll build up so much data and then it'll, it'll save it to the card so you've always got that on, on the card itself. Now, um, when I'm done for the day, I'm sitting here at the uh, at the shoreline now. When I'm done, I like to de turn my my auto chart off. And the reason why I do that is it saves all the data up to that point onto the card, so I've got everything completely there. I haven't got to worry about losing data when I power the unit down or whatever. So I'm going to menu, auto chart, right, turn it to the left, turn it off. There you see that very quick blip there. All the data has now been saved to my card. I can go home and manipulate my data uh, on my SD card so I can share it amongst all my four Hummingbird units or whatever the case may be. So I have a, I have a card for each Helix unit and as I have another video which I'll put a link here into this one where I show you how to manipulate that data, how to cut from one card to the hard drive of your computer and then from there back over to all your other cards so you have the same data in all your units. Alright, that's it. Thanks very much for uh, watching my video. Hopefully you learned something a little bit about Hummingbird Auto Chart Live and why it's such a powerful feature in all of your Hummingbird units. Thank you.